Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on this beautiful, beautiful Holy Saturday. Today I'd like to share with you some thoughts that were going through my heart and my mind this week. Months ago, I'd asked Melissa if she had ever seen any of the Star Wars movies. And to my shock, she said no, she had not seen a one of them. Well, in the past few weeks or so, we have had a chance to watch one episode every week. It has been delightful and entertaining as well. One of the things that came to my mind was uh, in two of the episodes, Obi-Wan and Yoda had particular moments in the movie wherein all of a sudden their countenance would change and they would say out loud, I feel that there is the disturbance in the force. In the movie, this was generally accompanied by some tragic event that happened on some distant planet where they felt through the force that something happened. Even though it was in movie characters, they displayed this through their mannerisms and their words. Well, last Sunday, Triumphal Entry Sunday, I felt something like that. It was right before the service began, I mean moments before, and I had this feeling like there was indeed a disturbance in my spirit. Yes, I had realized prior to this time that there were many people in this world who were hurting, many situations that were challenging beyond compare, but I felt it hit me like a ton of bricks. I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't focus. I did the very best I could in the sermon to remember everything that I had written down and everything God had laid on, upon my heart. I didn't know exactly what to do. I knew I could either just stumble and fall or I could trust God to see me every step of the way through it. Perhaps in this past week and this month, you felt that way too, like there's a burden upon your heart, troubling in your spirit and you don't know what to do. You know, I find it kind of interesting in that there was a feeling of sadness and tension and kind of nervousness within me. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, will I get sick? Will one of my loved ones get sick? What about my income? Is that going to be affected in some negative way? These are real concerns and they touch us right where we live. There's been an incredible rise over the past weeks of COVID-19. Perhaps one of our loved ones at home, one of your loved ones has been affected by this deadly virus. If not, others that you may know, friends and family in distant locations may have been touched by it. Our prayers and our love go out to each and every one. Others have lost loved ones. And we hope and we sit and we pray that that one day will come when we can look about in this time as just a, a bad memory. But in the meantime, what is it that we should do? How should we focus ourselves? How should we live each and every day? Well, let me share with you the words of the Apostle Paul from the book of Philippians. I'll be reading to you from Philippians chapter 4. I was just going to read a couple of verses, but as I read a little bit beforehand, it stuck out to me. Here's what Paul writes in Philippians 4, starting in verse number 4. He writes, Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean revel in Him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the Master is about to arrive. He could show up any minute. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. He concludes by saying, Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that and God who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. Whatever happens during this pandemic time, we are not going to emerge exactly how we went into it. We're going to be changed and changed permanently. Hopefully, we will be changed for the better, loving God with the totality of our beings and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Yes, in some, we have seen the worst come out within them, but others of us, I pray and I hope that the best will come out. So what shall we do? What shall we do? There is a beautiful poem that I'm gonna share with you in just a moment. We've experienced a disturbance in our lives. It's not a disturbance in the force as in a Star Wars sense, but we've experienced something very, very powerful. So what do we do? Well, Melissa had read a, a post for me, from, to me rather. It was from a co-laborer in Christ. I don't know who wrote this. There was no attribution given at the time it was posted, but it really spoke to me. Perhaps we could pray in this way. Here's how the post began. It said, for weeks I have heard people saying, I just can't wait for things to get back to normal. I even remember saying that a few times myself. I have, maybe you have too. But as I thought about our current situation, I have realized how much I don't want things to go back to the way they were. Here are a few of my thoughts. The first section of seven prayers. I pray that the next time a friend grabs you and pulls you in for a hug, that you actually take the time to appreciate the gift of their embrace. Wait till it's safe, though. Secondly, I pray that when school resumes and you are dropping your kids off, you take the time to thank the staff for the gift that they give to your family. Hug your children and send them on their way. I pray also that the next time you're sitting in a crowded restaurant, we take the time to look around at the smiling faces, loud voices, and thank God for the gift of community. Next. I pray that the next time we're standing in church, listening to the voices of praise and taking communion, that we take a moment to thank God for the gift of congregation. I pray that the next time we see a person or situation that needs prayer, I hope we pray as passionately and fervently as we have these past few weeks. I pray also that when we are in a grocery store, that we take a moment to thank God that he provides us with the necessities of life and the amazing people who work so hard to keep us supplied. And finally, and you could add many more to this list, I pray that we never again take for granted the ability to hop in the car and visit a friend, go to the mall, take our kids to a movie, and so forth. So truth is, I don't want things to return to the way they once were. I pray that we take the lessons and challenges of the past few weeks and create a new normal. My goal is to pray more, love harder, and truly appreciate the daily abundance of blessings that were so easily overlooked just a mere few weeks ago. If someone tells you that they love you, take it to heart and share it back with them as well. We have indeed experienced a real disturbance in our lives, a disturbance that has touched us to the very core, hurt us. We've lost loved ones. We've lost income in some cases. We've lost hope. But let me tell you one thing for sure. In my most hopeless days, when I felt like the world was about to come crashing down around me and no one else knew, I had hope and I had faith in God. He saw me through every step of the way. So what shall we do? Trust God? Absolutely. But we have also been given some voices who have the technical expertise and the requisite knowledge to keep us safe and sound as we go through this pandemic season. Wash your hands. Keep social distancing. Avoid big crowds. Wear a protective mask if you've got one and go in a place where you might need it. Use disposable gloves. Use common sense. But by all means, trust God. Pray. Love him with the totality of your being and love your neighbor as yourself. All these things will go to keep us safe and sound through this pandemic time. 
At this moment, I'd like to close with a word of prayer. Let us pray right now. Heavenly Father, we do indeed thank you so much for this day that you blessed us with. I pray that you'll be with us and give us strength. Give a healing touch to us during this season of life that we are in right now. Let our hope and our faith and our trust be in you. Let us use the wisdom and the knowledge that you've given to us through those who are in authority, those who know, and be with those who are our first responders, our doctors and nurses and police and fire. Give them also safety and be with all those in other areas, whether it's the grocery store or our local restaurants. Keep them safe and sound and keep all of our businesses doing well. And Father, we also pray for the researchers that they might find a solution, a vaccination, a medication, or some kind of treatment to keep everyone safe and sound and get us through this time. I pray for our spirits and our souls and the salvation of the lost in this world. Give us your strength this day and let your peace be with us. And Father, just be with us to let your love shine in us and remind us day in and day out that we have indeed been blessed to be a blessing, so let us be one. In your holy name we pray. Amen.